That wall that I have right there would, would have been the mission wall that surrounded the Alamo. And that's the wall that the Mexican troops hit. I'm right in the battlefield of why Texas is Texas. Vince Cantu runs Moses Roses, a San Antonio, Texas bar that's on the site of the famous 1836 battle, memorialized on the big screen many times by the likes of John Wayne and Billy Bob Thornton. He opened Moses Roses in 2010 after it had sat vacant for many years. My family's been here for four generations running taverns downtown San Antonio. Um, I'm proud of my family. My great-grandfather had a tavern four blocks that way. My grandmother had a restaurant. My grandfather had a restaurant less than a quarter mile that way. I feel like I am on the shoulders of giants. I like what I do and I like where I do it. I never really thought about it happening to me until it happened to me. I've been living under the threat of eminent domain for six years. The Alamo Trust, a nonprofit that manages the site, wants to expand the Alamo Museum, which would include building a theater and a civil rights exhibit where Moses Roses currently stands. Cantu says that in 2016, the group made its first offer of a million dollars, signed by then Land Commissioner George P. Bush, which would have barely covered his outstanding loans. Four years later, they upped it to two million. And I've told them no about times. Mostly because, you know, I'm 60 years old and it puts me out of a job. Come back in 10 years and see what it's worth and maybe, maybe that's the way y'all want to do it because I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna look at 10 year money at 3% a year when it's been appreciating at like 18% a year. At the outset, the $400 million museum expansion project was supposed to be paid for by private donors. When the funding fell through, the state of Texas stepped in to cover the cost. The state made two more offers which Cantu rejected. He said he'd sell for $15 million. So state officials, who declined to participate in this story, countered by threatening to take his property by force using eminent domain. Cantu would receive a so-called fair market price based on an independent appraiser's estimate of the property's current value. The appraisal came in at $2.1 million, or roughly $2.8 million in 10 years. In December, the Alamo Trust offered $3.5 million, which Cantu quickly declined. They keep alleging that you're not negotiating in good faith. What do you say to that? All lies. They've never called me, so we never really had a negotiation. They would send me an email with, a, with, a, with an offer. I would send them an email back saying no thank you and some other words. They've wanted to negotiate with me over my property, but they wanted a loaded gun to do it. They've wanted the threat of eminent domain hanging over my head for me to take their number instead of them taking my number. And running a business when you're under the threat of eminent domain is really, really hard. I mean, you know, because you're, as a business person, you're looking out today, tomorrow, a month from now, but you're also looking out five and 10 years out to see what you need. You need a new AC system, you need, uh, you need to remodel a place, you need to put some money into it some other way. And not knowing whether the government was gonna come in and take it at any, at any moment, um, really kind of defeated the whole joy I had about thinking about the future of this place and, and developing 10-year strategies. A pissed off Cantu started tacking on an extra million dollar fee to his offer each year that the government threatened him with eminent domain. And earlier this year, George P. Bush, who's the son of Jeb and the nephew of George W., called Cantu's refusal to sell at the state's price dishonorable. I told my wife that if I saw him, I would challenge him to a duel in front of the Alamo. <laughs> uh, we'd, use, uh, we'd use squirt guns, not real guns, because I don't want to kill anybody. And I don't want to get killed. But, uh, you know, I mean, just to, just to avenge my honor. Bush didn't respond to Reason's request for comment. Proponents of the Alamo's plan would argue that this is necessary. It's necessary that they take these buildings, that they seize them, uh, in order to expand the, the visitor center, the new theater that they're building. Uh, what do you say to those people who are supporters of the Alamo really expanding their footprint in the city? Well, those people that say that, uh, that support that, are the ones that read in the paper that I would not come to the table. But the truth is, is that I've told the museum people for six years that I would come to the table, that I've been waiting for six years for my phone to ring, for, for them to sit down and have an honest negotiation with me. So I've never been in the way of what they wanted to do. So I would say, how could I be in the way of something when I've told them I would sell to them from day one? They just never have wanted to meet me even close to my price. And uh, that's the government saying, we don't have to because we can eminent domain you instead. Cantu says that when he started Moses Roses, it was in a dilapidated part of town. He and his family are being denied the opportunity to reap the rewards of more than a decade of sacrifice. 
This part of downtown San Antonio was not a place anybody really came. There was a bunch of homeless people here. Um, my idea was to open up a bar and grill and um, have live music. But most of the people that played for me um, at first were just homeless guys with guitars. I mean, that's really kind of what we had over here, really. And then after a while, it just kind of started clicking. Downtown started opening up a little bit, and uh, this part of downtown started getting a little bit more gentrified and a little bit better. The San Antonio City Council voted in late January to authorize the use of eminent domain, which would allow the city to condemn and acquire the property to hand to the Alamo Trust if Cantu doesn't take their state back to offer. After our interview, Cantu met with the Trust's attorneys. He says they offered him $2.4 million, more than a million dollars less than what they'd offered him before the city started the eminent domain process. It was just a bad faith bullshit negotiation that they, you know, said they had to have um, before they would start eminent domain. Cantu has vowed to keep fighting. Texan is small government and, um, and fiercely independent. It's stupidly ironic, completely un-Texan, 